check, 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 check. Why is my mic giving me such grief? Why, 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 why? Yeah, okay, there we go. That's that's nicer. We are live! Everybody! But we're also on tape. We are deeper down in the bowels. Episode 106 of Camloops last week. Christopher Folds, Magic Mike, and Abilla at the controls. Before we get to Mike's dogs. 6, 106? The 6. Anything? The 6. Toronto? Yeah. <laughs> You didn't do your homework on this I got one. nothing on the 6, 106. I got 107 tomorrow. That's the, the Giants' all-time uh, wins record two years ago in uh, National League West. 106, that's the Dodgers had 106 wins, one less than the Giants two years ago, which is a good good year. That's if, you, uh, if you actually take 106, divide it by 2, you get 53. <laughs> and you take the 5 and the 3, you add them together, you get 8. And then you take the original number and you bring it back, you get 15. It's really amazing because 2006... Is the year I started River Song Guitars. <laughs> That's yeah. I don't know if that added up, but it was a good plug for River Song. I know yeah, what that was. That, that's my 06, uh, not 106, but 06. Do you have anything, Bill? For one, no, no. <laughs> it, it's it's 41 degrees Celsius uh, compared to 106 Fahrenheit, which was what it felt like yesterday. It was yeah, hot yesterday. Uh, yeah. yeah. Great show today, Reader's Digest. Kamloops Mayor Reed Hamer Jackson. We just talked to him, and it was interesting, as per usual. Yeah. Mike's puppies. Stop you want to see, you see a picture of these guys? They're, they're way better than me. Boop. So you lost your last dog, Zobo. Yeah. Yeah, Zobo was a, a border collie. I call him the world's smartest dog. I taught him to shake a back paw. And uh, we went for um, just... just over a year, I guess, um, without a dog. We weren't sure what we were going to do. And uh, I, I chatted with Monica, and, and uh, we decided that, yeah, we want to get one one more dog. Mm -hmm. And um, we were um, in Sycamus, actually. And this lady was walking this really nice, really cool dog that seemed really smart. And it didn't look like Zobar, a border collie. So we uh, we were chatting with, with, with her, and, and she said, well, you know, I got this from uh, this family that has this farm in Malacqua, just outside of, of Sycamus, and they had 17 puppies. So we went there, and it, it's the crazy cute. They've never done this before, and they had all these little puppies running around. Didn't know what to do. They didn't expect that they were going to have 17. Um, and we just fell in love with uh, this little red and white uh, dog we named Nuno. This guy on the uh, on your guys' right, left. This one. I don't. Yeah. No, that's Monty. That's oh, Nuno. Nuno. Yeah, and uh, and that's Monty. Yeah. So I, I uh, Monica. I guess I gave her heck for calling our dog Zobo, which is bozo backwards. <laughs> yeah. But it's not. Um, these are your favorite guitar players. These are my favorite guitar players: Monty Montgomery and uh, Nuno Betancourt from Extreme. So uh, I thought this is great, and so I, I tagged them. Uh, Nuno hasn't gotten back to me, but um, Monty Montgomery said, uh, I'm honored, and uh, it should be Monty Montgomery. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of dogs are they? Uh, these are Irish Setter um, and Poodles. Beautiful. We should have brought them in. The oh, they're a handful. They're oh, a handful. Yeah. So why did you get two? I thought you'd only get one. Well, we went there, and the, and the lady's like, uh, you know, you can get two for one. And, and we were we had two dogs before, and, and you know, in city camps, you're, you're Allowed two dogs, um, and we really liked having two dogs, and we thought they'd play together and, and do that whole kind of a thing. So, uh, spur of the moment, we were like, "Yeah, we did it before. Let's, yeah, okay." Yeah. They're, they're brothers; they they'll play together nice and, mm -hmm. and keep each other company, which they do. And and uh, this morning, I had one biting a, a thing, and the other one started biting it. Then I just let go, and they they chased biting this thing around the yard oh, and, and they're, they're super cute they look like really good dogs yeah. Mo monica just texted me and said that uh, uh monty stole her um her flip-flop and ran straight into the patio door i <laughs> 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 tried to get out so they're, they're at that adorable uh stage so That's nice and they're smart so there, there it is you went to vancouver on the weekend yep lions game cool quitlam no i went down to my uh my uncle jim's 90th birthday Uncle Jim. Yeah, and Who's he got a hold of one brother? a couple weeks ago. My mom's sister's brother, uh, husband. So my uncle. Oh. My mom, my, my mom had six siblings. So her, her, her sister's 
husband. Uncle Jim, and then they have six kids, just like us. So six Kennedy, the Kennedy kids. It was at the Kennedy compound in Coquitlam. Oh, yeah. And then there's six of us, and there's six of them. Almost identical ages going down. It's What's Uncle Jim like? Uncle Jim, the greatest guy in the world. He's the old Irish school? guy. He laughs like crazy. And um, great guy. I should send you the video of, uh, of him uh, when he came in to see the surprise. He had no idea. His birthday's in December. He's always wanted a summer birthday. So they arranged this huge birthday. His son, Joey, uh, works for the BBC, does documentaries. He, 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 he's here, he's basing it here, and um, he was filming it all with this incredible camera. It's good to see, the, uh, I, saw, I saw Sugar Shane and Daryl. Oh yeah. Uh, and uh, went out with Rick, so I had all my siblings there except for two. It was fun to see all the people there and just to catch up. I haven't seen them in years. It was nice. cool. On the way there, I got a call from the mayor. Oh yeah. So, and he called to ask about whether we can go with him to see some firefighting pilots but I said hey I'm, I'm I'm driving through Langley right now that was on Saturday so yeah we asked him about that yeah and it, we also asked him about uh, Noble Creek yeah. as well yeah. so what's the latest there December is the latest the city can continue yeah, exploring. Yeah, the Noble Creek irrigation system is an ongoing problem. The the the, the 41 users out there, farmers, Thistle Farm, Provado Winery, uh, Woodward Cidery, the Christmas Tree Farm, uh, hay, hay fields, which is important because the cattle need hay to eat. So it's a it's a ecosystem that goes down the down the ladder. They they need to know certainty where are they going to get their irrigation in the years to come. So. Uh, and, and, the, and the system's crumbling, there's erosion problems, it's old. So what the, what the, what the latest story that Michael Potestio did is that the, uh, the city um, uh, staff has said they're looking into whether or not this thing can be extended for one more year, uh, but December is the latest that they can, uh, they need to have a decision because the irrigation system will st start in what, a few months after that and they need to know where the water's coming from. And there's an issue with the riprap that was... Well, they, they put this riprap up to stop the erosion at the intake and um, if the erosion collapses onto the intake and it's going to cost a lot of money and the taxpayers will be out a lot of money because to clean it up, it's it, apparently it could be catastrophic. So uh, they put up this uh, riprap, emergency riprap, which is just rocks, you know, just to shore it up there. If you go out there, it's just around the 30 or 50 feet around the corner. and. Um, they were uh, what, what Greg Whiteman, the utility services director, said at last last council meeting two weeks ago. I think he said um, it was it was erected as an as an emergency measure, but that emergency state of emergency is over. So we're supposed to take it down, but they haven't really had a word from the province. But uh, I was listening in on a on a press conference about the firefighting, and Bruce Ralston, the minister, was asked a question about the riprap, and he said, "Oh, that's that's allowed to stay. That's been resolved. Now we're working on other stuff." So we did a story, and all the media did a story saying, hey, good news, the Minister of Forest, because the forestry is in charge of that, says that that stuff can stay up as they work to figure Which out. Which means another year well, to get ready for the users to figure out what they're going to well, do long term. Yeah, for, you know, for, yeah, for, for, for how, however long. But apparently, I got, a, I got a call, I got a message from someone at City Hall that says, ah, the Minister might not know what he's talking about. He yeah. might have misspoke. Um, and that they don't, they haven't had, they haven't had word from the province whether they can keep it up. So there's a lot of confusion there. Yeah. Too. The mayor seems to think that they're in no rush to take it down. I don't think they are because there's no edict coming down from above. But again, the city says they have not. Even though the minister said at the press conference that that they can keep it up, the city said they haven't had official word from the province on that. And I heard that the staff at the ministry think that Bruce Ralston misspoke, maybe wasn't sure what issue he was talking about, who knows. You had an interesting time at City Hall this past week? Oh yeah, last... With the composters? Last Friday, so about 10, 10 days ago. I, 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 got a call, I got an email tip saying, hey, you should go to City Hall on Friday the 18th at 10 a.m. or 1 p.m., I can't remember what it was, 10 a.m. And then there's going to be um, a bunch of uh, people who are opposed to the composting system are going to bring their bins to City Hall and protest. Yeah. I thought, oh, that'd be kind of cute, right? So I drove down there and thought, maybe, maybe it doesn't happen. And I, I parked on Victoria and I looked and I saw mostly elderly people, mostly senior citizens. And this one guy had three bins strapped to the top of his car. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because we just started this composting program last week where we should have garbage and recycling. And now we have a third bin where you're supposed to put your food scraps, your bones, your weed, weeds in there. So we have three bins now, um, it's a buck a month. And then because of that, the garbage and recycling has gone from one week to every two weeks. And that's pissed a lot of people off because they claim that one lady there says, I'm here because they broke the contract. I pay my utility bill quarterly and it's based on weekly pickup of garbage and recycling. And I compost myself, I don't need this program. So I'm bringing my bin back and I'm not paying for it. It's a buck a month, but still it's the principle. So I thought, okay, this is good Demo democracy in action. So I 
I was following them in, doing a video of them rolling their bins into City Hall, you know, demanding accountability from yeah. the, it's like a, you know, James, you know, like a, a Jimmy Stewart film, right? You know, so-and-so goes to Washington. So they're in there and I'm listening to them and, and the mayor comes out and starts talking to them and doing his, his best to like, you know, keep him cool. Uh, David Halladin, Halladin, he's the financial officer. He comes out and does a great job trying to explain democracy to them, which was hard to do because I don't think they understood. Because they said they can't do this. And he goes, well, actually, they can. They were like this. So he was giving them a one on one on civics politics. And then Maria Mazzotta came out. <clears throat> She's a corporate officer. And she was trying to explain to him. And I was just watching this. And I thought, this is kind of neat. I'm thinking a column in my head or something like that. And then, then I look and see a sign. And it was like, I'm one of the bins. <laughs> It's like, we don't need this World Economic Forum baloney. And then I thought, oh, no. And then, and then it went, the lady talking was, you know, rational and everything. And then she was, she was talking about the bins, and I understood her argument. I, I get it. And then she says, and what about 5G networks? <laughs> the 5G networks in town are causing all this problem. How many are there? And then she started asking the mayor and David Hallen about, where's all the surveillance cameras? How come everyone's always watching us? And then someone says something about this is all the United Nations is behind this, and I kind of just went back to the office because yeah. I've had enough. I've had enough crazy covering the Maui fires or reading the Maui fires and all the conspiracy theories there that um, I was exhausted by that point. Yeah, yeah, it was a little nutty. Any thoughts, Mike? I, I like how you went there for a news story and you left with uh, with a personal story. <laughs> There's probably just one lady who wasn't even speaking on behalf of the group. And you just you just had enough, and all the, the other people weren't. No, heard. no, no. There were signs, and then in fact, when I was in the parking lot and I was I was interviewing the one lady, way back to the office. I was, I was in the parking lot saying, "Okay, why are you here? What are you doing?" I was taping her, and uh, another lady next to her with the sign. Uh, it's a, a different sign. It just said "Hell No" or something, and she goes, "Where are you from?" Where, who are you? I said, I'm from, I'm from newspaper. Accounts this week? She goes, oh, you're in the media. Goes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we get information from you. So I, I knew right there, and I had a inkling that this probably wasn't, my, uh, wasn't my, my, my gig because I think this is the same crew that was you know, doing, the, doing the protest maybe in the, during the COVID when, um, when it was a pandemic. So anyway, I, I went in there anyway, and then I realized from the United Nations and WEF and Trudeau and... It's probably Bill Gates is behind it. I realize yeah. uh, I got I got more work to do. So. Well, I read that Bill Gates is about to release something really bad, <laughs> yeah, and it's yeah. going to take over the world or I something. Think it's Microsoft Seven or something. Yeah, yeah. It's a little, um, it's a little exhausting for sure. The town hall, new town hall format coming in October, yeah. um, led by Bass, New Stater, Sarai. Dale Bass is the chair yeah, of, the, of this of new the, committee. Yeah, it's a hybrid format. So it's not exactly what the mayor wanted. He wanted these town, like a town hall in place where it was just an open mic format, kind of traditional. This is different. They're going to do, I think, six different areas of the city. It's going to be a bit more intimate, and they're going to have facilitators at each meeting. And they're going to start start the meetings like that, where you can go and talk. Yeah, like an issues. open house. Like you go to the budget meetings now. They have different tables for different issues, and then and then yeah. So they're going to you, you come in, and maybe there's maybe there's. Uh, crime and security here. Maybe there's roads here. Yeah, they're, they're four um, based on the four priorities of council strategic plan. So safety, security, governance, yeah. and service excellence, liability and sustainability, and economic health and advocacy. So if you, whatever you whatever floats your boat, you go and talk to them and say, yeah. "Hey, I got an issue with this," and they'll talk to you about that. And um, yeah, where, where would procurement services fall in there? Well, you have an issue with that. I, I'd I'm not love sure. to talk to somebody about that because I bet you I won't even get one phone call about doing any of those events. <laughs> well, the first. Um, <laughs> the first, uh, the first meeting, as I understand, it, is going to be in your neighborhood in, uh, in Valley, Valley View. View. Uh, yeah, I, I believe so. So we got a great association in Valley View. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I think they're going to hold the first one in October in your neck of the woods. So you can go there and ask them. I how, think how I, come might. I can't get a fair shake on contracts here. What yeah. would you? You see your Dreamland bachelor area. What would you kind of bring up with? Uh, if you went to one of these town halls, what would your issue number one be about bachelor? Why oh. the tele, why the tinfoil hats aren't working with the five G networks in Bachelor? <laughs> the towers are too low. <laughs> I can't get cell service up there. It's probably because it's Bill Gates, but um, I can't. It's nothing. I, I don't have any issues. It's it's nice up there. Uh, um, the transit's good. Uh, I have no issues that are. Worth of course you don't. About, no. The ivory tower up there. No, There's just, no, no, no problems no. in your world. No, hey, do, do you have cell phone issues in in yeah. Batch? Yeah, you can't. You can't. You can't even. Uh, you can't. When I'm phoning on the phone there, when I was working from home during the pandemic, it would cut off after a few minutes. And getting service. Up there is like a bar and a half. I'm on vacation right now, by the way. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. What do you call it? Uh, it's Telus up there. Telus need to up their game up there. You, you, you know, uh, when I moved to Valley View in 20 years ago, 20 years ago, it's crazy. Um, my cell phone wouldn't work 
in my house. Yeah. And up to that point, I was so responsive to my cell phone and, and doting on everything. Mm -hmm. uh, by not having very good cell service, I learned a lot about time management and, and trying to... Shutting you know, down? Yeah. Which I didn't do before. And, uh, you know, that emergency, I'll get a message and, and yeah. we can deal with it. Yeah. But I don't have to be... Slave to your phone. Slave to my phone. And that really helped me out a lot, too. Good. Well, I know you helped us three out a lot this past weekend, too. Because it was another... Like, we had a great time together. And we're, you were kind of the helping, driving force behind yeah. everything. You, the, the idea you came up with, just incredible. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, I, what I thought was uh, it would be really great to uh, try... Have you tried to train two dogs with one person... It's pretty difficult. So I thought I'd bring out two puppies, Nuno and uh, Monty, and, and uh, we'd train them together. Well, and yeah. they love they love car rides, and they don't like kind of the pollution and the noise. They love electric cars. So where did we go? We went to Volkswagen because there is a plethora of electric cars there. You plethora. don't have to wait. You don't have to wait. And what did you start doing again? You started whining and complaining about? The interest rates. I thought they were too high, but I was told by Terry Lowe. Terry Lowe, 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 Lowe. Low rates, L -O -W -E. The lease rates at Volkswagen yeah. are unbelievable. There's yeah. no more six-month wait for these things like you always, oh, it takes too long, Terry. They have eight in stock, probably down to five now because people watch the show and they buy them. Mm -hmm. It's 400 yeah. kilometers per charge. Did you know that? 400 That's, you can go a lot of places with 400 kilometers. Yep. Yeah. You sure can. You can go to Vancouver and still have uh, juice. Left. You could also go to the dog park, which we did yeah. mm -hmm. with the dogs, right? Yeah. yeah. We went to the one in uh, the new one out in Dallas there, which was, and the dogs ran and ran. And then they grabbed that thing, remember? Yeah, yeah. The, the little, uh, the, it's, it's a uh, dinosaur, but it, it squawks like a duck, but it sounds like a fart. Yeah. Yeah. It's so it's one of my new favorite toys. <laughs> uh, I'm, all, I'm dog crazy right now. So. Yeah. yeah. And again, the ego started shining through. And he's still. He's still on this high from being called the news hero of Kamloops, news right, hero. in the YouTube That's comments. Right. Yep. And he yep. starts saying, I'm the granddaddy of them all. I'm the grand one, Foldsy. And I said, no, there's only one grand in town. It's the Grand Big, Big Mac. Mac. That's right, baby. The Grand Big Mac at McDonald's. It's good, actually. Have you had it? Yeah, it's fantastic. It's I haven't had it yet, yeah. and I'm really excited about it because I love all these different changes. on. Mm -hmm. I think this is my McDonald's pen, by the way. Mm -hmm. It's got McDonald's fries on it. Yeah. Yeah. Did you start feeding a Grand Big Mac to the dogs, though? Uh, well, we're really careful with what they eat, but it is very nutritional. So yeah. I gave them a piece of my uh, Grand Big Mac, yes. Yeah. Washed down with? It's McDonald's. You gave the puppies coffee, you gave the puppies coffee, <laughs> coffee too? Oh, yeah. Talk about farts. <laughs> oh, man. Somebody's going to be phoning me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was an amazing weekend. It always is. So get... Oh, one thing we forgot, though, too. He's going on about I'm the grand. He's also, I'm the big deal. I am the big deal. Chris Folds, editor, look at me, Bachelor Heights. I'm always working at home. I said, yeah. no, there's one big deal in town. It's at Gord's Appliance and Mattress right. Center. Remember about the rebates? The uh, absolutely, yep. If you buy any two qualifying Maytag and Whirlpool appliances, you save two honey. You buy three, you save three honey. I think it's such a great, great plan, and that saves enough money so you can go get a Sealy mattress for your puppies to sleep on. Amazing! I wonder yeah. if they make little Sealy puppy mattresses. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, they I'm should. gonna phone yeah, and, and see what happens. Okay. Steve Gordon's. It's Gord Stevens. Gord Stevens. <laughs> Steve Gordon's too. <laughs> Give him a call as well. <laughs> oh, what a weekend! Let's move on now to Reader's Digest. It's brought to you by McDonald's. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Mm, that was a little flat. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Hey, that was a better one. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Okay, what can I get for you then? How are you doing this morning? Good, how are you? I'm okay. I'm a little bit down about all this smoke though. How do you feel about the smoke? Same. It's kind of saddening. What do you what do you do to keep yourself in a good mood amidst all this smoke? Um, probably just reading books, honestly. Oh, what kind of books keep do you read? Um, most of the time I read manga, but right now a lot of my school books. <laughs> oh, what are you studying? I'm doing a paralegal program at Sprashaw right now. Oh, good for you. Good for you. McDonald's is helping you get through your schooling. Amazing. Yeah. What I do normally to keep in a good mood is order 32 Grand Big Macs. Now, <laughs> now, it's 7.08 a.m., so I probably can't order that, can I? Yeah. <laughs> Instead, then, I'll get two, shopping local, by the way, two medium coffee, both with two cream, and can one of those be a decaf coffee? One of them decaf. All right. Anything else I can do for you this morning? Yes, I'd like to make an announcement, please. You are doing a fantastic job this morning. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. I'll see you the first one. We'll talk about it the same. So who's right and who's wrong? Well, Ralston should be telling you guys it's on. Because well, and, and, and Minister Waz indicating the same well, way. I heard that his staff 
guys told the city. Talked about it on the show. And said he was he misspoke. He, he didn't know. It's all good stuff here. Okay, we're gonna start the show. show. Yeah, start the show. He mis he, he, <laughs> mis he mis he misquoted. He misquoted. He misquoted. He Opposite. It's a compromise. It's a big respect. You How do you feel? There. Is that a bit better? A little better. It's a bit better. A bit yeah. better. Okay. Candlest Mayor Reed Hammer Jackson, Reader's Digest. Reed, let's talk um, Noble Creek because we were talking about that off camera. Um, what's your take on the situation as a whole? As a whole, well, there's a big, big piece there. Um, I, I believe that uh, right now we've got some time. We've got a working group. They're working together um, for some solutions. Um, I did speak to Minister Ma just the other day out at the um, uh, evacuation camp out in Rayleigh, and uh, like she said, we've got you know at least we've got some time there. Mm -hmm. um, Minister Ralston has indicated that um, you know they're working with our staff, and uh, so I think um, I think it's uh, um, looking better. We'll say. So a few weeks ago. Um, you signed a, a, a state of local emergency order that allowed the a few city, months ago. A few months ago, yeah. Well, a few weeks ago, a number of weeks ago. It's summer, right? <laughs> okay. So you signed a, a state of local emergency to allow the city to do work they otherwise would not be allowed to do, but they can do it under a state of emergency to put up some riprap to stop the erosion from impacting or damaging or destroying the intake that gets the water to the 41. Uh, property owners out there, the farmers, the wineries, the important producers of food for us. So the rip prop was put up. It's 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 temporarily stopping the erosion. Uh, and and as I, as, as I understand it now, the water is still being used by the uh, by the users. But once the state of local emergency is lifted by law, that rip prop has to come out, as as I understand it. But uh, about a week and a half ago, uh, two weeks ago, uh, the forestry, it's under the Ministry of Forest mandate, the, the Forest Minister Bruce Ralston said in a press conference that uh, the city has permission to keep that riprap up now, now we're working on the other issues with, with respect to the intake. I was told that the city has not heard about that. Greg Whiteman, the uh, Utility Services Director, told Michael Patestio in a recent story that he heard Ralston say that, but the city hasn't got official word that that can stay up. And I heard that the staff in the ministry said that Minister Ralston misspoke and really didn't understand the question. So going back to that, can that riprap stay up? Because that's a crucial part of this thing. Well, every indication that I've heard that, 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 that nobody's in a big hurry to take it down. To take it down. But let's go back a little bit before I signed the state of emergency. Um, months before that, when the river was low, yeah. Um, uh, we went in and, and put riprap in. I I'd thought that the, the solution, you know, they'd, they'd riprap more, but they only did like 30 feet mm -hmm. in low water. So so we did that. That part was done, like I said, two months before we called the state of emergency. So, so I was quite in a shock that uh, that here I'm signing off on a state right. of emergency. But, uh, but yeah, at this point here, I don't think there's anyone, uh, you know, jumping up and down to get out. Uh, like no, I hadn't heard that either. I just thought, yeah. you know, b b at, at your last council meeting, uh, Director Whiteman said, you know, once the state of local emergency is, is removed, we have to take that down. Now, no one's telling them to, but that's what they have to do, as he was telling you guys at council. Yeah, because it probably, you know, what wouldn't have been engineered. It was, I mean, it was put in, in uh, three days it was put in. I mean, mm -hmm. they did put the landscaping cloth down or whatever it was. Yeah. But, but I mean, to, to for, for, you know, long term solution from what I've being led to believe, um, you know, we've got a riprap up and around the corner to to save, you know, the to save that asset. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's got to be, it's got it needs a lot more work. So I think that's what this working group is working together, and I, I hope to be a part of that. Um, you know, to do you to think this you know, system will be able to be used by the users next year in the current form, or do you think? It really has to change whether they take the water licenses, whether it's shut down, and they, they get the water elsewhere. Uh, you know, I don't I don't want to comment on that. That's something that the working group is going to be working with the city and the different ministries and and uh, and that sort of thing. But I mean, the system itself. I mean, Ted Blackwell, he went out there and uh, you know he's it's like he's uh, a pretty impressive. He's, he's a cattle, it's yeah, a Cadillac yeah. of systems, you know. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So I, sure. I, I just hope we can save the asset, and I hope we can all work together, you know, and. Uh, for a solution for for all of us, because and again, you know, to me, it's you know not an, not only food. I mean, look what's happening around you know look, look what's happening with everything that's getting burnt and things yep. like that. I mean, I mean, who wants to work with less less water if there's a fire out there? Exactly. You know, good point. And a lot of other things. You yep. know. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
arbitration. We were talking in the parking lot, and no one's really asked you for your opinion on on what's been happening. So, do you uh, want to lead the way and yeah, share like, your thoughts? Well, 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 I, I we should Chris mention. Did a, yeah, because I don't. Uh, I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't read your. Um, well, we should mention the arbitration is that uh, a few years ago, uh, a couple years ago, the city decided to 2019, revamp. 2020. Yeah, revamp the bylaws department by by. Uh, the bylaws officers and the civilian jail guards in the RCMP detachment here and making it to one unit called the Community Services Division but with enhanced education and they have to pass a fitness test and the union grieved it because they said that some of the changes weren't uh, violated the contract the city disagreed it went to arbitration and the arbitrators report came out uh, about a week and a half ago last week two weeks ago and um, he ruled that uh, the city's main argument and the union's main argument he dismissed both however he found three declarations against the city all of which said the city violated the contract and he didn't order anything but he ordered them back to uh, back to the table and if they can't reach an agreement on how to do this again, then he'll come down with an order. And it will certainly be against the city and cost the city some money. Um, I found it, I, I wrote, a, wrote a story on it, I did a column on it saying that um, I found it odd that the city w sent out a press release before anyone saw the decision. And you would never know that the city lost in the press release. We talked about it last word week. About salad, word salad. You thought they were glossing over what really happened. And then I, I wrote the call and saying the city definitely lost this arbitration award, but hopefully they can recoup something by, by reaching an agreement and minimizing the financial damage to taxpayers. And I got an email from someone in the city who said, well, we actually we think we won because we got to keep, we had to keep the CSO, the community services. Yep. And I disagreed. I said, you didn't win. And it's not even a 50-50. You lost but you might be able to, to take something out of the fire because he's giving you the opportunity to sit down with the union and see if you can um, appease them with respect to scheduling changes and all this kind of stuff. So, Mr. Mayor, did the city win or lose this arbitration hearing? Well, for starters, I, I don't think it's a win for anybody. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think it's a win for anybody. Um, to me, it's a loss for, for a lot of people, a lot, a lot of people that have lost their jobs yep. and things like that. And, and you know, I, I dealt with the bylaws people down. I, I had a business in West Victoria Street. Under the old in, system. In, under the old system, yep. yeah. And the, the people that were coming down there, they were great. They, they matter of fact, they took training through, I think, CMHA uh, to how to deal with street entrenched people and things like that. So, so I, I, again, I don't think it's a, a win for anybody. I, I think the city... Um, yeah, I think we really got to take a good look at what, what we've done. Um, uh, I believe that the union has, uh, I mean, come on, that's the majority of our employees. Let, let's, yeah, yeah. let's let's not, who's winning what, okay? Uh, for, for us as a city to come out and say that it's a win, how can you say that? I mean, did this really have to happen? Did it really have to happen? I, I or mean, 50 /50. I, I mean, you talk about you know spending money on investigations and things like that costing too much. I'd like to know what the cost of the, the of this whole program, which isn't it's not at the end yet because like I said, there's a lot of people lost their jobs and and you know for anybody to jump out of the chute and say you know that's a win is, is crazy to me. It, it's a 77 page re report. I've I've read some and scanned most, but 77 pages and yep. if you get to page 74 to 77 uh, again um uh, you know i don't think it's a win for anybody That's declaration. And definitely definitely not a definitely not a, a win for the city i mean um when your taxpayers are sp <laughs> spending I, I would say I, i'm guessing you know it's going to be a lot of money in in lawyers fees and it's already else. a lot just in yeah the, just yeah in the arbitration. and and yeah. again i knew some of these employees that were on the streets mm -hmm. and and uh and they're great employees, and they'd, they'd been working, you know, 10, 20, 30 years on the job and lost their jobs over... So se that, 7 out of 32 are now community services officers, but 25 have either, either retired, took severance, or took jobs, some with lower pay within the city. So there's a lot of people that need to be, as the union argues, they need to be made whole before we agree to anything. And by that, they need to be compensated for what they lost. And it could be a lot for people who lost their jobs. It could be just shoring up the lost wages they had in the last three years. It could be a lot of money, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, for sure, it can. And 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 it could be. Uh, and I think that we've got to get along. We've got to. We got to sit down at the table and and, uh, you know, sitting down at the table. You don't always need uh, lawyers. Mm -hmm. You know, you can sit down and talk about things. And you know, and, and I've met Ken Davis, and I think he's a very reasonable guy. And and. Uh, Do you think the city and the union? Um, 
uh, ha have a combative relationship? Do you think they get along well, or do they need to improve the relationship between the city and the union, QP Local 900? Well, I think we can always improve. I mean, look at look at us. This, this has been going on since 2020 or mm -hmm. 2019. I mean, it's coming on four years here, right? And uh, and um, like I said, the majority of our employees are, are QP employees. Yep. And so why not get along? Why why not? And like I say, coming out of the shoot and saying that it's a win, how, how can it be a win? How, how do you win that? You know, did this have to happen? Did it really have to happen? And what's changed so much? What's changed in those jobs so much? Well, the arbitrator said the job hasn't changed. It's the volume has changed. He said specifically in there that he found that the job has not changed. The, the city argues it has. He says the only change was the volume, the amount of people, and he said they, that could have been addressed by just re redirecting resources here and there. That's yeah. what he found. Yeah. And, and the city and, and, will disagree with that well, strongly, right? They, 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 they do disagree with <clears> it, <throat> yeah. but that's what the arbitrator found. He found that he agreed with the union, saying the job description has not changed. Well, now, whether yeah. it has or not, it's not for me to say, but that's what the arbitrator said. And like you said, they took training for street and trans people, but I was very critical of it, uh, you know, prior to me even thinking of being the mayor mm -hmm. I was very critical of, of and, I, and I and I said flat out like of the I switch mean, you're talking about well to, to doing it yeah like it's like uh, anybody that thinks I mean this didn't even go to council and anybody that thinks this isn't going to cost thousands and thousands of thousands of dollars when you're playing with uh, people's lives like that um, and you don't think it's going to cost a lot of money and I don't know what the exact number is but it didn't go to council because apparently the, what they felt the, the cost was going to be was less than what has to go to council or whatever. So, you know, I've been, I've been critical of it. I mean, there's a lot of great employees. Don't, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of great employees. But, you know, there's a lot of people that, that um, you know, were 20, 30 years on the job. And, and you know, other people got jobs that, that um, you know, you know that, uh, that I feel took people's jobs that it shouldn't have happened, you mm -hmm. know. So. Is there anything else? Because you... You heard back from the city or somebody in the city after your call. Was there anything else that they were pointing out that they, they were just saying? They were saying that they thought it was it was a win, and then I, I responded and said a win, and then they corrected themselves said, "Well, we we, met, we think it was a 50-50 because we get to the big thing they thought was we got to keep." Uh, the arbitrator did not make us dismantle the CSO program. We got to keep it, but I said, "Yeah, but you still have to sit down and and reach an agreement because you breached, you violated the contract." He found on on three issues, and that could cost money. And of course, it's just a matter of yeah, but we're sitting down and we're trying to fix this, and we're trying to fix this. The union uh, told me that um, th as they're sitting down, um, they want them made whole, which is the big deal here because that's the money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and and again, how how can anybody say it's a win? Mm -hmm. You know, come on. How I, can, I, I, and and again, things have gone out lately. I mean, I mean. I'm on council, but there's been releases from council where I didn't even know they're happening. So you know. <laughs> Speaking of wins, is the new hybrid town hall format a win? Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. It's better than nothing, right? Yeah. It's better than nothing. Let's let's let's. Face City it. council has decided to go forward. They they well, formed the, the, form the, the committee the, to the community engagement committee. committee. You were invited to sit on there and you declined. Well, but I I'm, I'm I, I want community and engagement. But you, but you were invited to engage with the yeah engagement I know but committee. but I but I was on another committee. Yes. So you know what we did we passed over to staff. Do you know what this committee did? Mm. Passed over to staff. So you see on the committee. Okay, why why if you're gonna have a community. Engagement committee. Engage and do some Why work. don't you have community on that committee? The big this committee. Is, the big difference um, is you wanted Dale, Dale Bass, the chair, and Bill Sarai and Katie Newstater, right? Yes, and and I think Reed's different. The big difference. The main difference is is the mayor wants public on that committee, correct? Well, no, uh, no, no. I I had it all set up to have a town hall meeting, mm -hmm. to have a town hall. Number one on the agenda was seniors, 60 yeah. years of age and yeah. older. Yeah. We could have had it the second week of September. Mm -hmm. Why have a committee? Why not have one? It's not going to cost you anything. It's going to cost what we've got the facility, already had the facility. This one here, apparently we, we want to take another $20,000 out of the taxpayers' yep. money, to, and yet we're worried about saving money, changing our community charter or our, our code of conduct mm -hmm. to not have investigations in into issues that people are having. I, it's how much does that just, cost anyway? The investigation into you. I have no idea. I, I heard. I, a I hope. I'm, I heard a number. Well, you've heard more than I had. And again, I don't know anything. I would like you to go to council mm. and ask them to release the whole report. You, I want to see the whole. You and your I lawyer and McMillan have not seen the report yet. We have not seen. The We've report. read it. You haven't read it. We haven't read mm. it. Yes.
Okay. So I would like that to be public, to go to the public. and, and I heard it's it. six figures so far. It, well, I'll bet you. In the cost. Hey, I, I've been investigated the day I got elected. Don't you remember? Like, I, oh, you yeah, know, the yeah, security the car, thing. Yeah, I got security, security started. Yeah, and, you know, yeah. the, you know, the, mm -hmm. somebody called somebody's house and threatened him. And it yeah. was, you know, yeah. like, uh, you know, like, again, I, 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 and at the end of the day, we want to see all this. Uh, out in the cost. open. Yeah, out yeah. in the open. So yeah. I have no idea, but it, that would be nice if, if you could release the, the, it to me. I can't do that. No. No, but it's but part of the deal. Yeah. Yeah. It's part of the deal, eh? <laughs> Who's the deal then? I can't tell you. I know. What about what about the format though? Because you wanted more with the town halls. You wanted kind of more of an open mic format, right? Like a traditional open mic format. And this is not what that is now. They're going to kind of like they're going to six different communities. They're having kind of mini Round table facilitators. Sort of, yeah. And then there will be an open, open mic houses. part of it. At the end I think, yeah. 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 But you, you, you don't like that format, or you like the open mic format better? I don't know what I'd like, because you know what? We haven't had one. We were going to have one. Matter of fact, we had, uh, you know, we could have had a, a, a town hall meeting, like I said, the second week in September. And and, uh, and why wouldn't we do one to see how it's going to go? Why why set up, um, well, I think you know, why, why, why not just do it? Well, part of the argument is they think that the same people Who's kind they? of... Well, some some of the Katie Newstater said that um, rather than having the same did, people did, did, coming, I, I'm to not sure. But did, she, did some one of the councils also say, can we not have certain people in the public? That, that's that's well. If the, the, they're commandeering the meeting, the same people are going to these meetings and, and hogging the mic. And this format, they believe, will be different. And there was even talk that you might be able to limit it to the residents of those specific little little niches to get yeah. on the mic. Well, what do you mean hogging the mic? You know, anybody in the city that has no problems, why would they come to? Uh, City Hall to go to a council meeting at 1.30 in the afternoon on a Tuesday. If people have issues and they're not being resolved, well, they're, they're going to come. So, well, you know, when you have how many, do you know how many um, Noble Creek uh, residents were at council last council meeting? A, a lot. I mean, mm -hmm. the, and there was the, six hours of talking. Their point is some of these minute. people. Yeah. So maybe if we let them talk a little bit more, we wouldn't have that. That's a, I mean, that, that was great to hear from those people. This is a little bit different. Yeah, like, do you do you want some of these people who do have problems? They are almost hesitant or timid to go to these meetings because they're just going to get drowned out by the same old. Well, some of them are like nut bars that come in and talk about the same well, shit all the time. Kind of talking about. I'm not calling so, so, it a nut well, bar, but well, who's a, who's a nut bar? <laughs> Okay. Which, <laughs> well, tell me one nut bar. Tell me one nut bar that has come to council. So, some people that we have not had to call the RCMP. I'm talking once. about town. I'm talking about town. Some of the town hall meetings and some. But you're these, assuming. Some, and some, you're no, assuming I, nut bars. Been, I've been to some of the even the meetings when you guys are running when you're running for for mayor and council. The debates. It's the yeah. debates. It's the people that come up and they stand up there and they have their their agendas and they talk for ten minutes. Meanwhile, people who do have issues are drowned out. They don't get their time. So that's that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, so you know what's really funny what you just said there when you're running for mayor and council. You know, isn't it funny that up until October the fifteenth The election date. The election year. date. Yep. Yep. When you guys held those yep. town hall meetings. Forums. Forums, yep. sorry. Mm -hmm. How many councillors didn't show up? Well, uh, well, you mean candidates? That's there was right. only a couple. Uh, Darpan Chama didn't because his son, his kid got ill. Had to go to the right, right. Uh, how many marital candidates didn't show up? Uh, how many councillor candidates didn't show up to a town hall meeting? Very few. Very few. Huh. Yeah. That's kind of weird, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And then after the election, we're having a real hard time getting town hall meetings. Well, they're, they're going like to have they, now. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like we, organized, we organized those ones, though, right? We organized the the media organized that one. I think what 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 well, maybe what, you could organize these ones. And well, I think what Kate, well, you pay us for it. I think what Katie and uh, <laughs> and, um, and and Marty are referring to, not necessarily nut bars, but it's like Den De De Dennis Dennis Walsh, nut right? Bars? No, Dennis Walsh. You know, there's nut bars. Out Bronwyn there, Scott, they're, they're, and they're not nut bars, but Dennis and Bronwyn, they're very activist, and they're almost every meeting talking about some things that does really don't have anything to do with their personal lives, but they're concerned about the community. But I think that's what they're talking about. When I when I listen to the to the council meeting and I'm working and I have it on the on the on the YouTube there on on the Google. Yeah. Um, I, I I just know Dennis Walsh or Bronwyn Scott's going to be talking in, in the public inquiry part. Nothing wrong I'm not with saying, that. I'm, I'm never saying, I'm not saying they're nut bars. I'm not calling them nut bars like some people. I'm just <laughs> saying that. Saying they're <laughs> they, they come up and they tend to be. Who's he talking about? Well, yeah, they tend to be more frequent. 
uh, presenters, as you know. Well, they're and they're very concerned citizens of the community. I mean, come on, sure. Dennis Walsh yep. was a three-time councillor. Yep. Okay. Yep. I mean, he knows a little bit about what's going on. But yep. but I guess the other thing too, if you're not getting answers to the questions, you'll keep asking them. Like, you know, what about community engagement? No, what about community engagement committee? To me, community engagement committee. You want people from the community on it. Well, what's the what? What does that mean? Community engagement. Mike, what does that mean to you? It means I got to turn off my mic. It means three counselors <laughs> having to the shower. Look at his <laughs> Yeah, you know, I I I kind of um, agree with. Uh, oh, just hold on. Let me get this going here. Okay, oh, man, rough start this morning. It feels like. Um, it's okay. I, I I agree. You know, I, I think that uh, if you're going to have a community um, engagement, you should have members of the community on it and uh, make it easy format to talk. Because you know, I've had certain issues that I've wanted to talk about and not known how to deal with it. Uh, maybe this is a good format. I, I also understand uh, when you get somebody that's long winded and, and talking about potholes or or, or something that's kind of okay yeah we get it, belaboring the point yeah but um maybe we could set up something where we've got a yay and nay mic and if there's everybody against on the nay side of things or something uh for the first person talking nobody talking about the other side we can go hey you know what there's, there's a lot of people that are they're against us maybe we need to investigate this further and and find yeah. out what's going on maybe the town hall meeting format isn't a long format but it's uh you got three minutes uh to talk about what your thing is and if you disagree with it then um yeah. or, or whatever and then you yeah. have that or you know and, and i've been pretty good at the five minute rule but but you know like you get a guy like adam woodward who's representing you know 20 people do you want to go um you know uh 20 people at five minutes or or allow adam to speak a little longer yeah. for more people, yes, right? Common, so common it's sense. common sense. Yeah. You know, yeah. use a little common sense. But, but again, I don't know. Uh, again, to be on a committee, we're on council. Most of all the committees that have been ever since they put the ice on the standing committees mm -hmm. that that. And again, all I was doing was proposing some adjustments. Okay. Well, you actually but, sent out a list that said, "Yeah, no, I know that to to." to Council, yes. not to you, but you no. got it but we, before I crossed the bridge. Yeah, yeah. All right, <laughs> but, let's get that straight. And it but, wasn't me but, that sent it to you. I can tell you that right no, now. No, I know it wasn't you. But you said that that after the fact that that was a proposal. They took it to be that's the final new list, and a bunch of them were booted out. Well, no, they weren't booted out again and and again. I'm sorry, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful at mm. all. I'm not trying to be dis disrespectful at all, but when you have the Development and Sustainability Committee, Development and Sustainability Committee, and, you, and you've put uh, me as the mayor, have put the chair of that who's committee, the CEO of who, Common Industries, who, who's yeah. doing a 200-acre development, oh, I get that, but and, and he has a family member that's in the planning department, mm. and you, I'm, I'm sorry, you just try to alleviate that. If you and I are doing a 300-acre deal over here or 200-acre over here, but I guess getting back to what I'm saying is talk about community engagement and everything. Since those standing committees have been on ice, there have been all kinds of select committees, yeah. but it's the same people. Mm -hmm. It's the same people. And at the end of the day, you got three doing this, it's going to end up going to nine. You got four in the other one, it's going to go to nine. Mm -hmm. Okay? They talk about the working groups. I asked for um, the people in a council meeting um, that, that are volunteers, that are citizens for... for um, um, working groups mm -hmm. I, I, I would like the list of those names I still haven't received them um, you know so again do you go to these, are you going to go to these town halls though still the ones that have been the six they're planning to do oh for sure yeah. well for sure any you know any time getting out in the community and, and listen to the people I mean I mean again you know if you guys had a form uh, tomorrow um, versus in October or November you know after before the election you had 20, was it 24 people, maybe less one of yep. councillors and yep. five mayors yep. that would all show up. Yeah, There's right. 250 people. I think the last one you had maybe 200, no, 250 was, people. It, at the Grand Hall, we ran out of room. It was the biggest ever. Yeah. 500 plus. Because yeah. people want to hear what you guys are talking about. Yeah, that's right. And, and, and so why is it so different right after the election? Well, why do we not want to have that community, the, the real community engagement? And when you're having community engagement committees and, and, and people are asking, can we limit people from the public? They wouldn't have done that the day before the election. 
I think they're they're not trying to limit people from the public, are they? Just, just, I, I don't know. Not jobs. You, you, only the nut jobs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you you think the citizens of Camelot are nut jobs? Some, some of them. Give me a some break. of them. Absolutely, they are. <laughs> you damn well know that too. <laughs> well, we've seen them at three, four o'clock in the morning, maybe. <laughs> some well, of them. Actually, can we talk about uh, composting? Because you guys had an interesting kind of oh yeah, the day. composting. Yes, <laughs> yes. Okay. Oh, so the city has introduced a, a composting program that has radically altered the schedule of pickup of garbage recycling and composting. A lot of people say it's about time, a lot of people are freaking out, they don't like it because garbage instead of being weekly and recycling weekly is now every second week, composting is every week, except for three you months. You watch our show week. last week to see a good explanation. Yeah, Glenn Farrell uh, described it very good. So basically it's trying to divert food from the landfill and uh, and uh, it's, it, it's, it's a, it's a well-intentioned thing. But some people don't like it and there are some people who went to City Hall last Friday, uh, 10 days ago, uh, uh, mostly an elderly group, I would say, and they rolled. They, the, it was a concerned about costs. Yeah, they, well, they were concerned about costs. <laughs> They're also concerned about breach of contract on that one lady's. Uh, she was she was adamant it was breaching a contract because she pays her utility be, bill on a quarterly basis. Everything's been changed. She doesn't want this bin because she does the composting in the back. Right. So what they did was they came in and they rolled in t into the city hall with their. <laughs> They're green bins. Yeah. There was about half a dozen green bins and about a dozen people in total. And they came in, and then this one old guy just walked right down the hall to your office. Yeah, because they didn't want me going out there. But you came out there. Oh, yeah, and for you sure. Started, you did your King of Kensington thing, and you were talking to everybody there. Here's some Kaiser, I know, right? you? I know. Yes, I know, right? you know. Anyway, I speak about riding a bike. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Nice to get my groceries. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm 75, and I'm not in favor. Oh, okay. Nobody yes. asked me okay. later. I wasn't. I'm not in mm -hmm. here. And uh, calming them down, and then Dave Hallinan came, and he did a fine, fine job trying to explain democracy to these people who they didn't quite understand it. And then um, 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 the corporate officer, uh, right. Maria, came out, and she was trying to explain how the demo democratic process worked, because I didn't think they quite got it. I was there, I got tipped off, I wasn't going to do a story on it. But I didn't, because once... They stood. I, I, I understood their whole point about you know composting and pro pro and against, and we've heard that in the news. We've done stories on it, but then I looked over and saw a sign <laughs> on, on one of the composting bins, and it says, "We don't want your World Economic Forum bullshit." And then she started asking about 5G networks, and then she started asking about surveillance cameras, and then it was like the UN. I was late for a meeting. Oh yeah, you had to go, and I had to sit there and listen to the United Nations is behind this now. So then I <laughs> thought, okay, I'm taking my leave. Too. I got to go back to work too. <laughs> Talk about nut, nut jobs. I'm not saying they're not. Nut I'm not saying that. No, they were. No, they, they were. Nice. They were nice they people who were concerned about that, but they're they're tying in the composting program to conspiracy theories, which I found a little interesting. You well, you know, like maybe maybe if we let them talk more at council meetings, we would have that happen. You, well, I'm sure they some talk, of them did leave their bins. They wanted some left their bins. Some left their bins, and they actually uh, the, the biggest question was how do we get on the agenda to speak to council about this? And you were asking Maria to let them know, and they might they might appear down. Yeah. The road. If something's on the agenda, yeah, but, yeah. but again, I mean, and again, you know, um, I, again, if we would have, if we would have been able to have our first town hall in the second week or whatever of they September, they it. were all yeah. sixty years of age and older, yes, right? They so were. they could have got up and each of them spoke for five minutes and yeah. got the concerns, and we would have staff there mm -hmm. taking notes and. And they weren't not jobs. They 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 had well, probably they well. they probably they were in city hall, and it just so happened to be that the mayor came out. They, they oh no, that was good. That was that was democracy in action. I'm yeah. just saying you don't think it's a little little. What did you hear from them in your conversations? About? What were some of the things you heard from them just in your do you know dealings with them? Well, the one lady that was really. Um, the elder today do there. She was she was concerned about costs. No, not no. The, no, the other the, one. The, yeah, yeah, it's, a, do it's a dollar a month. Costs. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying. Yeah. Hey, hey, listen. The reason why I wanted to have the town hall with seniors. Mm -hmm. You know, you say it's a dollar a month, but yeah. when I went down to that seniors barbecue at uh, Riverside Park, yeah. they have a lot of concerns. They oh, have a lot do. of concerns about things. Sure. I know we all do, but they. That's why I wanted them first on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Sixty years of age and older. Yeah. They've got transportation issues that we can speak of they we've you know again why not why not let not definitely them. back to that can't they also they can go to these neighborhood meetings that council is is proposing and they can you know if they live in dufferin they can go to that one if they live downtown they can go to that meeting how are those working out well, they haven't started find yet. Out. But if, when they do, wouldn't... They've had neighborhood groups for years. But aren't those meetings Don't going you to remember we had the community engagement yes, committee? Know, yes, or, or, no, no, it was, what was it called? When, for the West Victoria Street group, we had a, uh, a group of, you know, a whole bunch of people. But at the end of the day, I mean, the people that they couldn't come to the 
to the meeting where people like the ladies from the Stair Warehouse or Francis, somebody that's been there for 40 years, yes, yes. and they, they have this group working. Well, that's a different type of thing. This is a general, general public town halls that are going to six different neighborhoods. So what I'm saying is... Maybe it's going to be great. It's going to well, be awesome. Yeah, the seniors you but talk you've to... you've got an open mind. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you bet. And you're you going to be there. Why wouldn't I? I'm going to yes, go to the Upper Sahali one. Yeah, because no, that's no, where you live. Where's the first be. ones? Well, the first one's going to be uh, Valley View. Valley View? Yeah. Oh, yeah, and they're... they're Juniper? Well, Valley View, Juniper, Barnhartville, and then they're the going to go... Juniper, Barnhartville, Dallas? Except December. That's the, the first month one. Except December. So, yeah. Juniper, Barnhartville, and Dallas. I think so. The, uh, they call it the south, the, the northeast. The northeast. Southeast. Southeast, yeah. The southeast. I wonder what the, the crime rate is in Juniper, Dallas. Well, Valley View is pretty high. Bar Val no? Valley View, for sure, Valley yeah, View. Yeah. But, but Valley View is because... You know with the actions that have been taken. You know with the motels and things that we've got around the there. River Bank. Yeah, but but be, well, yeah, I've yeah. been on the River yeah. Bank. The I guys know. got yeah. kicked out of that place yeah. across the street or yeah. on the River Bank yeah. because of that. All right. Well, they didn't want to go downtown for some reason first because they were talking <laughs> about it might it might give optics. Remember that they're, they're talking about that. So anyway, it doesn't matter where they're going. They're going to go. But seriously, why? Go seriously, you know when was the last time? You know, and again, there's crime all over, but mm -hmm. but Juniper. Barnartville, Dallas. Mm -hmm. No, it's not all about crime these. No, it's about everything, halls, though, right? Yeah. Roads, but, well, parks, dog that's parks. Fine, but what's one of our biggest uh, issues we have right now? Uh, social uh, disorder on the street. Yeah, for sure. So, so yeah. why wouldn't we tackle? The well, they are. Well, if, if it's not, if it exists less out in that area, then it would be better for them to have a a more intimate area where they can talk about things other than other yeah, than. I, I'm just saying that it's a big part of our community. It's a big things that we're dealing with um, okay. we got a lot of people struggling with mental health and addiction problems and you, you guys saw it right yeah when you got up with you well, I think the kill, but but I guess what I'm saying is um, um, do you see anybody up in Juniper um, laying there struggling with mental health and addiction with no. a needle hanging out or buggies? Or do you, do you see them in Dallas? Do you see them in Barnhartville? No, but I don't. The, I would the, think the, that would. The, the focus of the town hall so is not when, just when, about that. It's about uh, that's, everything. I understand. It's what people that. want to talk about. I understand. And they that. might have issues up there that are just as important. Like, you know, oh, you bet. Oh, I'm not exit, saying they're not. I'm not saying they're not. But for fires yeah. and all yeah, that. Yeah, I'm not so, saying they're. Yeah. I'm not saying they're not. I'm not saying that. I'm saying, why don't we start dealing with the issues that are the greatest because hmm. the people the people that live in Juniper and Dallas and Barnerville a lot of them work in town yeah they can they 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 see what's happening in front of their shops sure. I mean I was I was with a guy the other night that owns a shop downtown Camelops and uh, he sold his residence and he does not live in Camelops and he would never thought that he would never have a residence in Camelops really yeah and he owns a business still he owns a business but he moved out of town moved, moved because of sun the peaks. Everything? sun peaks oh because of yeah. the everything going on yeah that's not good where did he live it's not good where did he live what part of town um i think he lived at rose hill well that's a nice part of town. it is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay but fire, fire, firefighters you a barbecue let's switch topics you were on saturday you met firefighters yeah, dinner or? yeah the the the, um, the um aerial firefighters um that they're staying out at the property out next to the uh, next, uh, Camus yeah, Club. Yeah. Country Club. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 The, the Force uh, Forsbergs. They they mm -hmm. had a um, barbecue for the. Well, they 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 did a um, um, pulled pork and brisket. They roasted a big roasted pig, for. Right? Well, they they cooked beforehand. it for eighteen hours yeah. beforehand. Yeah, mm -hmm. crazy. And had a bunch of them there, and uh, yeah, it was really really nice. They do that. I mean, they're great great family. Do a lot for the community. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the aerial firefighters. They mean. Working a lot of hours and it's a know. dangerous job. It's an impressive yeah. job. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 very good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, it was. Did it you was, hear any concerns or issues they were having? The, these pilots or? Well, they were having a tough, tough time flying in the smoke. They couldn't even, mm -hmm. you know, they couldn't even get to their targets and things like that. And did you ask them anything about whether they, what they thought of the criticism of the service, or they're beyond that, right? Because they're just doing their job, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah they didn't, uh, yeah, they didn't comment on any of that kind of stuff. It's just really li interesting listening to their stories, and yeah. you know, so yeah. It's on your mind. Anything? We've gone through our. Topics du jour. So, anything else you want to talk about? Anything else coming up we should know about uh, the city? Good, good. Well, good I'm things? sure there's lots coming up. I'm sure. You, I'm sure there's 
Lots you more know, investigations you coming up. You, but you just tell me ahead of time, and <laughs> if you could get me that report sometime, it would be really be nice. You know, if you could let the citizens of the community. Uh, is there any update on the legal the legal proceedings? Of parts of it. Any update legal proceedings with the, you and Katie? And oh yeah, what's going on? With the, yeah, because I know that uh, Katie filed her response, and you responded to her response. And on August twenty first, there are supposed to be. Uh, Michael's looking into it. On August 21st, there's supposed to be a special hearing in chambers to address your concern that you want a certain thing stricken from her response to your response to the lawsuit. Anything happened on the 21st? It's 28th now, right? Yeah, so. yeah. 28th now, yeah. yeah. Have you heard anything? You know, no, you know, and everything will, everything will, will come out in, in the court, right? In the trial. Yeah. It's going to go to trial. Well, as far as I can see, when, you, when you're turning something that... Uh, Somebody approached me at one of your forums. I uh, wanted to help me into into this. This is crazy. Huh? What? They what? Well, at your forum before the election. When, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, when a certain family member. Oh, uh, Mr. Kruger. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Approached me right yeah. after the forum. Yeah. And uh, wanted to help me. Right. So and they, and here we are today. Yes. But so it's going to go to trial. You don't see. Well, any I don't. You know, I, I'm not. I'm not a lawyer. Are you a lawyer. Judge. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. You let your I'm not take the care city of. lawyer or the councilor new staters lawyers, no. which are I guess city lawyers mm -hmm. now, right? Yeah. yeah, she's indemnified. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mike, any questions for the mayor? You know, I uh, I have I have a bit of a comment. Um, hold on. What's going on here? By today? the way, I've been to a lot of events. I wasn't taking selfies of myself or anything like yeah. that. I did, I did direct the uh, Zamboni at the Pride Parade. Pride, Pride Parade, Parade, yeah. I've been, I've been to a lot of events. I just don't, I'm just not much for social you know, media. Yeah, and and you know, I'm not, I don't self take a lot of selfies. He, you know, uh, during the, um, the 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 smoky days of music in the park, we were really concerned with what was going to happen, um, and I didn't know, um, I didn't have a good procedure in place for smoke right so i phoned uh, reed and and or texted reed and, and said hey who do i talk to at the city for um the, your rules what what you do and how do you how do you discern whether or not it's safe to work outside what's the city's rules yeah, what's exactly. the city rules so uh reed got me in touch with uh, chrissy chrissy got me two different city managers and they have two s very similar but slightly different because they're different one that was Parks and Rec, and the other was uh, Pools. And uh, we came up with a, um, a procedure and, and uh, a protocol for when it gets up to 10 parts per million or 7 to 9 parts per million and, and beyond uh, so we can know what's safe for our, um, our staff. Because we, we were on the phone all day with uh, WorkSafe oh, yeah. trying to figure this out. They're very specific when there's a problem. But when there's no problem, you're just trying to figure something out. You can't. Yeah, you don't know what to do. They, they, they just say things like, uh, we recommend. Well, what's a hard rule? Right. Um, so I do really appreciate uh, that. And I think that's a, a great example of uh, businesses and, and the city working together and, and uh, it was very fast and very easy so thank you and you know Chrissy is awesome uh, Chrissy's worked for the city for 14 years and she's awesome at, at doing things I, I guess that, uh, the biggest thing that I which I've somehow forgot you get me get me going here is <laughs> is the is the uh, is as how thankful that we all should be to the firefighters to the volunteers Absolutely. to everybody and, and you know here we're sitting there talking about stuff which doesn't matter you know I talked to uh, um, Cook P. Toma from the yep. Squilux uh, oh, yesterday, good, and I story on that, talked yeah. to his brother. Yeah. And, you know, they lost 31 structures. Tragic. And, and yeah. uh, but you know the good thing, and they're, they're so they're so positive. Yep. You know, it's like they say, you know, we didn't lose a life. They thought that they might lose one or two, and 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 you know they lost 31 structures, and and they're you know they're out at, at, um, at a you know camp just north of town here, and uh, and, and I think uh, we, we really got to respect. You know what's happened to other people. You know all this stuff we're talking about. Put it in here. perspective, right? Yeah, put yes. it in perspective. First world well, problem. You know, here they've lost their structures and all, and all that stuff, and yeah. and they're thank they're thankful that um, that they, there was no loss. And we're life. thankful for all the firefighters, everybody that's yeah. putting themselves in danger yeah. out there, boots on the ground, BC wildfire, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, you know, and again, you know, again, you know, talk about Chrissy. You know, our staff. You know, yeah. even staff working. We've got a lot of great staff. Okay, you know, people think that I'm like whatever anyways we've got a lot of great staff okay and um you know even even hot nights in the city you know i was talking to the organizer there like 24 hours before he was short two streets for cars 
You know, he was, was busy, he, busy one. He yeah. was like, and it was because of certain things, you know, new people that worked at the city didn't know that this was grandfather and blah, blah, blah. But anyway, to make a long story short, you know, the, the procedure was, and I, and I did the same thing. I con contacted Chrissy. Chrissy did this. CEO Trawin stepped up to the plate, did you know what? Hot night in the city went down good. I think it was like forty thousand people there, or something like that. There. Yep. I mean, I, I was I, I apologize because I was trying to get there in time, but there was mechanical problems at the ferry, and so I didn't get there in time to say a couple of words. Uh, but Ron was going to say some, but he got busy and blah blah blah. But anyway, but I was in contact the whole time. But Chrissy, I, I like Chrissy because you're too big of a deal to talk to me now. I have to book you through Chrissy because you know you're a busy guy. But she does a great job. I don't want to be a cheap place. <laughs> she at the she, same time. she makes get, it happen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> trouble. Yeah. She's got. She's always bubbly and she's happy to try and make things work. So good yeah, job, Chrissy. Good job, Chrissy. You bet. Yeah. She's actually taking a couple days off, so that's oh, good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No. Okay. I think we're good here. That was that was good. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, Chrissy's awesome. She's great. So she knows she's worked for the city for 14 years. She worked at the pool. She's. We are here with Brenda at Gord's Appliance and Mattress Center. And Brenda, you are going to show us today a wall oven that is in a blowout sale. Yes, it is. Tell us about the oven. This is the Whirlpool Smart One. You can hook it up to your cell phone. It walks you through everything. You can scan to cook if you've got frozen dinners. You take your phone, you scan the barcode, it'll bring up the information you need to cook it. Uh, it's voice control, so like your Alexa, you can say, hey Whirlpool, turn on the oven to cool. 350. Really nice on the inside, three racks. Why is it on sale? Why is it on a blowout sale? It just discontinued, they're uh, making a new one. So that's the only reason it's marked down. Okay. So it's regular 26.99 on for $21.95. And is there, how many of these are in stock? This is the one. The Ooh, this is the last one. So get yes. on down to Gord's and get your wall oven while you can. Thank you, Brenda. You're welcome. Takeaways from Reed. Well, um, never dull, never dull moment with the mayor. Um, you put him off a couple of times, distracting him, he said? I don't know, yeah, I, I, I don't understand, I don't see it, but I guess, um, no, it's good, it's, it's early. They, people gotta know we're filming this on an off day. Much earlier than normal. We start filming at 7.30 in the morning on a Monday, which is probably the worst day in the world for me because I'm not a morning person, I'm not a Monday person, but we're here. We're and doing you were it. at uh, Uncle Jim's too. There's probably a few PBRs going down. Oh, the yeah, weekend, there's so. a lot. And then I, then I went back to my brother Rick's place in Abbotsford and I had taped the game and Lions game. Oof. And I watched that and I was in depression for the next day. Ridiculous display on that game. <laughs> Just a ridiculous <laughs> display. The Lions are in trouble. Rick Campbell is probably the last coach you need right now. He motivates like Dilton Doily. It's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> you, Rick Campbell, because he doesn't like you. You don't like him now. No, I just don't. I think his whole coaching staff got out coached two weeks in a row now, three of the last four. They don't know what they're doing. My dog could bark out commands and get better results. Nuno, as I mentioned. Nuno and Monty could do that. Nuno and Monty job. could do that, yes. So, Mike, oh, what yeah. did you not like specifically about the Lions' performance? Well, when they uh, took that uh, oval shaped thing and threw it and they didn't uh, run it to the other end yeah. properly, yeah. I thought that was the, that was uh, the biggest problem. I biggest think. problem. See, yeah. see, Mike would be do a better job in the coaching staff right now. <laughs> Just brutal. James Butler comes in, you know he's going to run down your throat, you know he's got, he's got something to prove, he's got a chip on his shoulder. No adjustment. Reed wanted to talk about arbitration. Yes. It seems like he just still, I mean, he's got a problem with the whole CSO. He did before it started. Right. I mean, yeah, yeah. he didn't want to, he, he didn't think they needed to change it. Um, no, nor did Ray Dollywall, who was another um, mayoral candidate. That was a big thing for him too. Triple so, A Ray. Triple A Ray. Yeah, he didn't like the, uh, <laughs> he didn't like it at all. And um, he still, he runs his Ray's Locksmith Facebook page, and it's basically a page against the city, against the CSO program. It's, just, it's a good read. You should go there sometimes because he's got information on there that, like, I told you so, I told you so, I told you so. We'll see what happens with that. Um, do, do you know any uh, um, bylaw officers couple. from before? I know, yeah, two or three from before. One yeah. still works for the city at a lower rate, mm -hmm. and two are now re retired. I, I know a bunch, and, and yeah. uh, they're, they're not the type of person uh, to be a CSO officer, I don't think. Like, they were good as bylaw people, mm -hmm. and I thought they were really well fit for that. Yeah. But when they changed the whole description, I, I thought that's that becomes a little more... Well, and that's what the city's arguing. Exactly, the city's arguing, saying that we're changing this so much that we need people. that They can they can stay, but they have to get a, a two-year diploma in certain fields. They have to go for the fitness testing because it's more of a social services type of thing. 
thing here. The union argues in the two years, two and a half years since, it hasn't changed. The arbitrator f agreed with the union, said that yeah. even though you changed the description, you changed the, the title, and you uh, increased the requirements, the job itself has not changed. That's what the arbitrator found. Yes. Now, yeah. now the that's city what will disagree heavily. We'll probably get an email yeah. about, uh, about I'm just that. saying that's what, in the report it says that. It says what changed was the volume of calls, the same calls, and what they could have done rather than change it all is just instruct the, the bylaw officers, uh, you know, do this, do this, don't do this. That's what the arbitrator says. I'm not agreeing with him. I'm just saying that's what he found. I, what I'm not like. an HR expert uh, at all. I, I build guitars and do sound for bands. Mm -hmm. But I know that if I change a job description too much, mm -hmm. that could be terms for forced uh, termination. Forced, well, making them quit. Well, right. The, the big issue here with the term, with the with the arbitration was the union argued that they changed the, sh the scheduling of the shifts, mm. and they and they added a probationary period. Those two things were contrary to the collective agreement, and the arbitrator found that to be in violation of the co collective agreement, which is why the union said that they that they they welcome the ruling and they want to resolve this at the table, but they still want all the employees affected, 25 of them, to be made whole, which means they want them to either get their jobs back or get paid in lieu, 25 times whatever is a lot of money. Yeah, if you've retired yeah. over three or four years, mm -hmm. that, that's... They're talking, what, what would they have been paid during those three years, right? I mean, I'm assuming that's what they mean when they say make whole. Or let's say, let's yeah. say, uh, let's say John Doe was a bylaws officer making 32 bucks an hour. And then because of this, he couldn't do the new job because whatever, he couldn't qualify for it. So he goes down to parks and he's making 25 bucks an hour. Well, what's seven bucks an hour times 40 hours a week times three years. Yeah. It's a lot of money. If it comes to that. I'm it's just like saying that's a possibility. 70, 75 or something thousand dollars. Well, that's a possibility yeah, is what well. I'm saying. And then, then when I talk to the union president, he says, damn right, so we want them made whole. That's part of our bargaining. And so we'll see where it goes from here. Well, if they want to play guitar in their retirement and with their newfound windfall, I'd yes. be happy to help them out. <laughs> <laughs> it's Marty? time for me to go on vacation. Where are you going? What are you doing? I'm going back home to well, White Rock to see my family. Haven't seen my niece and nephew in a long time. Little Hazy just turned two uh -huh. on August 26. Eight is four. I missed her birthday, so I'm going to get him some gifts and make up for it. Be good Uncle Marty. Bring up Do some uh, McDonald's coupons for uh, free ice cream. Yes, that's a good idea. Yeah. Maybe see some friends too, hopefully. Do, do you like to do things, Uncle Marty, get him a drum kit just to, or, or I got all my nieces kazoos one year because I you thought that'd be really fun. <laughs> Little mini guitars for him. I'm sure you have that. I can yeah. Or noisemakers or something that's just like. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be nice to see some people. Good talk. <laughs> okay. Good it's, show today. It's Monday morning. It was. Um, <laughs> Oh, 442 subscribers we're up to. We had a really good episode last week, viewership-wise. And uh, Foldsy doing his thing here. A lot of people tuning in. So thank you to everyone who's listening to watch. If you're listening on podcasts, send me an email to klw at camloopsthisweek.com. We don't hear very much from the podcasters. Maybe there's things that we could be doing a bit different to, to please the podcaster people. If you want to advertise on our show, email klw at camloopsthisweek.com. We have a great crew right now, though. We've got Volkswagen of Camloops. Magic Mike sponsored, or the Magic Mirror sponsored by Volkswagen of Kamloops. Gord's Appliance and Mattress Center, Steve Rogers, Gord Stevens, thank you very much. Brandy Seek on at McDonald's. Ba da ba ba ba. For Christopher Folds, <laughs> for Magic Mike, and for Bill, I'm Marty. We'll see you last week. Most is more